Welcome back to the Football Terrace. Hit the like buttons. Make sure you are subscribing. In new surroundings today, as you all know, it's KJ's wedding. He's getting married to his beautiful fiance. So I'm not at home, but the content is still coming. So hit like buttons, subscribe, and make sure that bell notification button is turned on as well. Remember, also in the description, click on the link to my new channel, The Squad, and go and get yourself subscribed. Now, a few transfer stories to talk about this morning, because although it's March, a lot of people typically say, oh, I don't even want transfer stories in March. Why do you want to hear about what's going to go on in the summer now? Well, why it's important is so much of the groundwork, so much of the negotiations, so much of the planning and prep begins now for the summer. And if your club is not linked to anybody, if your club is not doing any work, they very much could be starting the summer off flat so it's really, really important that your club starts as they mean to go on. We're going to be covering Arsenal today. We're going to be looking at Manchester United. We're going to be looking at Liverpool as well. But I want to start off with Manchester United. Because when I was driving yesterday on my way to, to, to Birmingham, I stopped at services and you know, went into my WhatsApp and saw everybody talking about Gareth Southgate and Manchester United. And I understand how, I was reading the, the story here that says that Southgate is on Manchester United's list of potential replacements for Eric Ten Hag. I think the outrage to this, I think the meltdown to this, the panic surrounding this story is ridiculous. And the reason that I say that is because there is no real credible link to the manager. He is just a name amongst many upon a long list of managers that the club may or may not look at. That's the the, 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 the severity of it. In the same article, we're also linked to the Derby and we're also linked to Thomas Frank. Now, I understand there's a lot of Man United fans that don't want that calibre, that standard, that level of manager either. But to ignore those two candidates within this story and purely focus on the connection to Gareth Southgate, I just feel he's, you're always looking to be annoyed. You're always looking to be frustrated. We're also being linked in recent weeks to the likes of Zinedine Zidane and Inzaghi. So the club is looking, the club is talking, and it's going to work out. But it has to have a list. It has to have a list of people. Southgate's name, in my humble... I mean, there is a different story that's come out uh, in, the, in the last few hours... Uh, from the Academy Scoop that says there is no genuine interest uh, from Ineos' part in appointing Gareth Southgate. And you'll probably find that what this story really boils down to is that a journalist has been told that a number of names have been provided to Ineos, and most likely by agents. And it's likely that the agency of Gareth Southgate has said, we may be interested in this job. Make sure you think about us. That is as, as serious as this is. So when it comes to, I understand there is fatigue with Man United fans, but slow down. In my personal opinion, managers like Southgate, Thomas Frank, uh, his name now eludes me, Graham Potter. I would be, if, if we end up signing a manager like that, I'll eat my hat. I'll genuinely sit on here, I'll boil it in some water, and I will munch on my hat seasonless. I just don't think we'll be in that position. Could it be... A De Zerbi, if the likes of Inzaghi, if the likes of Simeone, if the likes of Alonso are unattainable for us. Yes, it could be. But I don't think it's going to be a Gareth Southgate style signing. I don't think Ineos are that stupid, if I'm being absolutely honest with you. Now, we're going to come back to managers in a little bit on this video, but I wanted to touch on Arsenal because there is continues to be this narrative they need a prolific goal scorer they need a prolific goal scorer and I think the word need is is currently taking a back seat in some people's vocabulary when it comes to speaking of Arsenal because they're free-flowing they're scoring lots of goals and I agree with that to an extent however and there is a however in this they still need to add more goals to their team it's as simple and it's as straightforward as that they need more goals I don't think you can get away from it every team needs more goals Every team, if you could add another 15 or 20 goals to this Arsenal team a season, that puts them in an even stronger position to be able to win. And we're not talking about taking 10 or 15 goals away from other players. We're talking about adding additional goals. 
Ivan Tony is a name that does not seem to want to go away. And a big boost here that appears to state that Arsenal are now closer than ever. With Chelsea no longer convinced by the Brentford striker Ivan Tony, according to transfer expert Fabrizio Romano. It goes on here to say that um, speaking exclusively to Court Offside's um, debrief podcast, Romano did mention that Arsenal could uh, could be an option for Tony, whilst also name dropping Manchester United as someone likely to be in the market for the striker. And I love that. As a Man United fan, I like the idea of Ivan Tony. I think he's been a bit hit and miss since he returned from his suspension. But are we surprised? This is somebody who spent the better part of a year out not playing football, had no real preseason, and he's finding his feet again. And I think the first two or three games back, you saw the sort of excitement, the euphoria, the ecstasy of returning. He was getting by on adrenaline. Now what you're seeing is the levelling out and him building up his genuine match fitness again. But Arsenal, they're the front runners in this deal. As a Man United fan, I'm not going to get my hopes up. If Chelsea have pulled out, I just think that gives Arsenal an even bigger chance of getting the deal done. And staying with Arsenal, Martin Zubamendi, one of the best young, up-and-coming midfield players in European football. He's been linked with a move to the Emirates for a long, long time now. Over the course of the last two weeks, Arsenal have sent even more scouts to watch him. They are really sort of going in deep when it comes to their research on this player. They are unturning every single stone because they want to be sure. They want to be sure, Arsenal. Whether they go into this summer as English champions, European champions, both. I doubt it will be both, but it could be. They are still looking to improve. And I've been telling people for the better part of two years now, Arsenal are serious. Arsenal are dangerous. As a rival club that's far behind Arsenal right now, they scare me. And if they're adding Ivan Tonys and Zuba Mendes to this already brilliant squad, the potency and danger that they possess is going to go to an absolute another level. Now, back to managers again. I'm just clicking here and looking. There's two separate stories today. Oh, by the way, Man United, I forgot to mention, is also linked to Thiago Mota as well. So a huge list of managers that we're linked to. But of course, Liverpool are in the pursuit of a new manager. And it's so interesting that there's been two big reports in the last 24 hours. One from the Telegraph and one from Damasio claiming that Bayern Munich are the front runners for Alonso. Now, Bert here, uh, uh, Jason Burt from the, the Telegraph here states... That Bayern Munich are now, are now growing in confidence that they have the advantage in the race for Alonso, uh, should he decide to leave Bayern Leverkusen. And we know he's going to leave Bayern Leverkusen. They're going to win their league this year. They're 10 points clear with 10 games to go. It would take a collapse beyond all collapse. And within that, uh, uh, Bayern Munich to be absolutely perfect. Bayern Munich have probably got to win the last 10 games. And they've still got a hope that. that, that uh, that 11 points are dropped, essentially, which is, which to get to 11, what, what three, three defeats and two draws, or four, or four defeats, you're going to have to have more than Bayern, it's not happening, they're already champions, in my humble opinion, he's going to leave, though, Bayern Munich think they're leading that race, and also Damasio, now, I'm not stating these journalists are right, so Liverpool fans don't attack me, I'm just giving you the news as it states this morning, the Bayern Munich currently lead the race to appoint Alonso um, as their next coach, is what Damasio said. Liverpool were ahead two or three weeks ago, but things have changed and Bayern have moved quickly. Now, there's no real detail in terms of what has changed, but that could be transfer budgets, that could be money. That could also just be that he preferred Bayern Munich anyway, but they hadn't shown any interest. Now that interest has been shown, they're leading the race. It could be, it could be as simplistic as that. But Liverpool fans, I know a lot of you are convinced that you're getting Alonso, and you very much could. But if you can't get him, who's the alternative in your eyes that your club should be signing? Let me know in the comments sections below. I'm very intrigued to hear from you on this. I think he's a brilliant manager. I'd love him to come to Manchester United if and when we, we depart with uh, Eric Ten Hag. But I can't personally see that. Hit the like button, as I've mentioned. Make sure you're subscribing. Turn on that bell notification button as well. And check out the squad 
All the information for that is below. Take care, goodbye, God bless, and I'll see you soon. Peace.